Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, again. Trump sat with Yoda in deep meditation after the recent turn of unfortunate events. Defeat, you did this Darth Hillary, but never before an evil like it this galaxy has seen, said Yoda, breaking the long silence of their meditation. Just as evil you say these other new Sith are, Darth, Dick, WMD, and mislead us. I do, responded Trump, but there is none more evil than Hillary, though Bush, Cheney, and Blair come pretty close. And Supreme Chancellor Biden, what know you of this man? Ask Yoda. Crooked Joe. He's a bad guy too, real bad, but he belongs in a care home now. Sleepy Joe's not as savvy in the ways of the dark side as Hillary was. He's more of a puppet being manipulated by China and Ukraine, Trump continued, his tone dismissive. But don't underestimate him or those who pull his strings. They're playing a long game, Yoda. Yoda nodded thoughtfully, his eyes narrowing as he considered Trump's words. Underestimate them, we must not. A dangerous game they play, yes. The dark side, strong in deception it is. Sleepy Joe, a figurehead might be, but disrupt the galaxy he can, if unchecked he remains. Trump leaned forward, his expression serious. We need a plan, Yoda. The Sith have taken over the shadows and are now threatening us with nukes. Yeah, I heard about this new Death Star. They're more dangerous than ever now. We need to hit them hard while we still can on all fronts. And the first step has to be to unite the galaxy against them, expose the puppeteers behind Sleepy Joe, and take down Sidious once and for all. Agree, I do. But careful we must be. The dark side, unpredictable it is. And allies, we will need. Not just from within the Republic, but from beyond. Even from those we might not consider friends under normal circumstances. Trump raised an eyebrow, intrigued. You mean reaching out to Putin? That's a bold move, my little friend. But if it's to bring balance and peace to the galaxy, I'm all in. Yoda smiled, determination in his ancient eyes. Wise you are, Master Trump. Build bridges, we must, even with those we disagree. For the fate of the galaxy, bigger than our differences, is. Spot on responded Trump. The corrupt mainstream media are doing the same thing here they did in my galaxy and supporting illegal wars. The galaxy needs to hear Putin's side of the story. He'll expose these warmongers, especially Biden, Bush, and Blair. Yoda paused for a moment before responding. Shine light cannot, if hidden it is. An opportunity we must create. Expose we must the darkness. I agree, replied Trump. It's only a matter of time before the Jedi are outlawed and become the hunted. We have to strike now. A team of our strongest Jedi will break into CNN and reclaim our broadcast studio. We just need to hold it long enough for Tucker to complete his interview live. The only way for the Sith to cut off our broadcast is inside the building. Time, use it wisely, we must, Yoda advised. A powerful tool, the truth is. But ready for the backlash, we must be. The Sith, cunning in their response, will be. Trump nodded, his mind already racing with strategies and plans. We'll be ready, buddy. Just wait till Melania hears about this one. That evening, as the Jedi team, led by Trump and accompanied by a suited Tucker Carlson and Anakin Skywalker, approached the news studio, the air was thick with tension. This was more than a mere broadcast. It was a mission to unveil the truth in a galaxy clouded by CNN deception. Upon entering the studio, they were immediately met with resistance, not from physical barriers, but from the evasive mind games of the news anchor Corrine Jean-Pierre. Her questions were like blaster fire, aimed to derail and confuse. After a slight pause to regather himself, Trump used the force to lift and put her head first into a trash can. It's where you belong, he quipped. With the room secured, Trump centered himself and extended his hands, concentrating deeply. A shimmering portal began to form, its swirling energies crackling with force energy. On the other side, the Kremlin's imposing silhouette was visible, a direct line to Putin himself. Putin, 
appearing suspicious gazing through the portal, seemed initially unwilling to step through into the unknown regardless of their explanations. However, he sensed the gravity of the moment and agreed to give the interview through the portal. I cannot join you there, but I will support your cause from here, he declared, his voice resonating through the studio. Bastard can speak English after all, thought Trump as he continued to focus on maintaining the portal connection. Putin had always insisted on communications through a translator to Russian. Meanwhile, the other Jedi formed a protective circle around them and held all entry points to the broadcast studio, lightsabers ignited and ready to defend against any threat. Tucker, ever the professional, began the broadcast, his voice steady despite the surreal situation. Ladies, gentlemen and other beings from across the galaxy, today we bring you a message of unity and truth, a live interview with President Putin through a force portal, a first in galactic history. No sooner had the interview begun than the studio was besieged by clone troopers and Sith attackers, drawn by the surge of force energy. The Jedi sprang into action, their lightsabers swinging against the coming breach. The battle raged on, but through the chaos, Tucker's voice continued to resonate, carrying Putin's message of peace and the exposure of Biden's crimes on his own home world. The tactics he and his allies employed to claim and hold power, their warmongering corruption and deception. As the interview concluded, Trump shouted out to Putin with a final message as the portal began to fade. Don't trust China. And with a final push of force energy, close the connection. Breathing heavily, he looked around at the Jedi, Tucker, and the now silent studio. They had done it. They had broadcast the truth to the galaxy despite the Sith's best efforts to silence them. This is just the beginning. We're going to make this galaxy great again, Trump stated, wiping the sweat from his brow as his gaze swept over his companions. Today, we've shown these bad guys they can't hide their crimes, even in another galaxy. The truth cannot be silenced. We stand united against the dark side. But the road ahead is long. We must be ready for what comes next. A large blast shook the building. We need to get out of here, shouted Tucker. As Anakin peered out the window, his sharp eyes caught the sight of Biden approaching the building, an entourage of figures cloaked in shadows trailing behind him. Biden's coming, and he's not alone, Anakin warned, turning back to face the group. Yoda, his expression unreadable, nodded slowly. To do damage limitation, he seeks. Yet more than that, there may be. Prepared. We must be. Trump, ever the strategist, raised a hand, signaling for calm. Wait, he advised, his gaze fixed on the approaching figures. If we can defeat Sleepy Joe and his allies here, we've won half the war. But be on guard, Joe's the slipperiest man in Washington. As Trump finished speaking, the portal he had just closed behind him appeared to reopen. The air shimmered, and suddenly, Another figure was pulled through the dimensional rift, an old man from another dimension. Who are you? Demanded Trump. Fool of a toque. There is no time to explain. I am Gandalf the White, and I know your plight. What is it, Gandhi? Asked Trump, annoyed at being called a fool, but Gandalf disregarded his question. I bear grave warning. Your portal has weakened the fabric of reality opening gateways across this galaxy and other dimensions, allowing for the return of ancient enemies. The Sith are coming, he said, looking visibly shaken and spreading an infectious fear to all within earshot. Darth Bane, Darth Revan, Darth Maul, and many more. Trump's eyes widened at Gandalf's dire warning, the gravity of the situation pressing down on him. More bad guys. This could be a problem, he muttered, turning to Yoda for guidance. Yoda remained still with his eyes closed for a moment, using the force to confirm the truth in Gandalf's words. Dangerous, this development is. Strengthen our defenses, we must. But hope, there is still. Powerful allies, we have. Anakin, still watching Biden's approach, spoke from the window. What is your strategy, my master? We have to act fast. Trump nodded and turned back to Gandalf. What about our guys? The good guys? If the bad guys are getting help, then why aren't we getting more Jedi? 
Gandalf had been busy checking the trash can in which Karim Jean-Pierre still resided for signs of life by striking it sharply with his staff, muttering quietly, another worm tongue I see. I was just getting to that. Trump and the Jedi looked around at one another with an awkward impatience. Well, prompted Trump. Well, yes, Gandalf confirmed, a serious tone returning to his voice. The disturbance your portal caused has not only brought old threats, but also an old hope. Many Jedi who were lost in the Clone Wars and prior have agreed to return. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, and many others hear the galaxy's call. They stand ready to join this fight. A wave of optimistic cheer washed over the broadcast studio, a reminder that hope could always find a way, even in the darkest times. Outstanding, Trump exclaimed with a victorious smile. Who needs NATO when we have such an alliance? Together, we'll form an alliance unlike any the galaxy has seen. These Sith will die like dogs, like Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Suddenly, Anakin's voice cut through the celebration. They're here, he shouted as the sound of blaster fire echoed around them. Gandalf moved toward the door, behind which their adversaries were trying to break through. Closing his eyes, he stood with his staff raised, an embodiment of calm amidst chaos. What are you doing? Trump asked, puzzled by Gandalf's seemingly eccentric behavior with danger so near. After a moment of intense silence, Gandalf's eyes snapped open. A Biden of Morgoth, he murmured. This foe is beyond any of you. Run, bellowed Gandalf. But before any of them could move, the doors to the studio burst open and there stood Joe Biden. But Gandalf yet held the way. You shall not pass, he bellowed at Biden. Joe Biden, pausing at the threshold, seemed momentarily confused, his eyes flickering with an uncertainty as though lost on the way to the restroom. We, we have to. You know, the thing, he stuttered, his words trailing off into incoherence, his message lost in a maze of confusion. Gandalf's frustration, held at bay by his patience, finally broke. I have not passed through fire and death to bandy crooked words with a serving man till the lightning falls, he exclaimed, his voice echoing with ancient power. The studio, filled with the tension of the impending confrontation, seemed to hold its breath at Gandalf's declaration. Trump, seizing the moment of Gandalf's distraction and Biden's confusion, whispered to Anakin, get ready, this might be our chance. Anakin nodded, his lightsaber ready to strike. Biden, taken aback by Gandalf's response, attempted to regain his composure. Look, here's the deal, he began again, but his words faltered under the weight of Gandalf's unwavering gaze. A sudden change came over Biden. His expression switched from puzzled to menacing. No man can kill me, he hissed in an unrecognizable voice which struck at the hearts of the surrounding Jedi. Even Gandalf felt the weight of this evil, like a chill wrapping its frozen fingers around his heart. I am no man, responded Gandalf defiantly, standing his ground. I am a... He must be trans, said Trump, finishing Gandalf's sentence warmly, looking around at the other Jedi and Tucker in an encouraging tone. We don't discriminate here, guys. He went on, clapping a hand on Gandalf's back. A wizard corrected Gandalf not taking his eyes off of the now changed Biden. The standoff, charged with the potential for unavoidable violence, was interrupted by the sudden arrival of reinforcements for Biden. The air crackled with the energy of arriving Sith and clone troopers, their presence a clear signal that negotiation was no longer an option. Gandalf, sensing the shift in the air, turned to Trump and Anakin. Fight, fight to the last man, fight for your lives he declared. The time for words has passed. Biden stepped forward. Old fool, do you not know death when you see it? At that moment, an enormous blast shook the entire building. Biden had been unaware that Tucker had turned the cameras back on in the studio, broadcasting the menacing Biden and his uncharacteristic behavior. This together with the Putin interview was enough to spark a much needed rebellion which now descended in fury upon the broadcast studio together with any other Jedi within the vicinity. 
Seeing the monitor reflecting his face and sensing the disturbance outside and across the city, Biden and his allies decided it was better to flee rather than continue to inflame this adolescent uprising, using the dark side of the force to obscure their retreat. In the aftermath of the intense confrontation, the heroes found themselves amidst a momentary calm punctuated by the distant echoes of chaos outside. The unexpected retreat of their adversaries offered them a brief respite, a chance to regroup and reflect on their next move. Gandalf, his gaze lingering on the spot where Biden and his allies vanished, turned to Trump with a mixture of curiosity and respect. Your skills with this bright sword are commendable, he said. Where did you learn this? Trump, with a smirk, replied, it's not too different from swinging a golf club. It's all in the wrist action, really. Seizing the moment, Gandalf produced a small golden ring from his robes and offered it to Trump. Your war is not over, my friend. The ring will aid you, he said solemnly. Its power is great. Use it wisely. It will enhance your connection to the Force greatly. Trump examined the ring before taking it. Nice. Melania has one just like it. Accepting the gift, he nodded in gratitude. Thank you, Gandhi. I'll use it well. The wizard's gaze then turned distant, as if seeing beyond the walls of their current reality. My time here grows short, he announced to all with an earshot. The paths I walk lead me elsewhere, back to my own realm. Remember, the bonds you forge and the alliances you build are your strongest weapons against the darkness. With those final words, Gandalf began to fade, his form dissolving into the light. As the group made ready to depart the studio, the clamor of upheaval from the outside world intensified. Suddenly, two figures shrouded in gray robes made their entrance. They lifted their hoods to reveal familiar faces. Hello there, Obi-Wan. Anakin shouted, unable to hide his astonishment, seeing his old mentor alive, whose loss he had mourned for years. Anakin, it's truly heartening to see you again, brother. I've been keeping watch over you. You surpassed all my expectations, Obi-Wan replied, his eyes reflecting pride and affection. Anakin moved closer, the reunion stirring deep emotions. I have much to share, my old master. Darth Hillary is still out there somewhere. We shall defeat her together. Yoda emerged from behind Trump. Master Qui-Gon, said Yoda, returned you have. Missed greatly, your counsel we have. Qui-Gon glanced at the assembled group. It's good to be among you once more. The living force has guided me back, he said, responding looking over towards Trump. We should summon the Jedi Council immediately. Much has changed, and much action is needed if we are to prevail against the dark side of the force. Meanwhile, on the volcanic wastelands of Mustafar, where lava rivers flowed like the lifeblood of the planet, Darth Sidious stood contemplating the chaos that had been unleashed, destabilizing the very fabric of reality itself. The dark energies of the Force had swirled around him, whispering of the return of ancient Sith Lords. A normal general, emperor, ruler would be pleased at such reinforcements, but not a Sith Lord, particularly when he sensed one of the resurrected to be the old master he had betrayed and callously murdered. The realization that the dead were stirring filled his heart with a dread he hadn't felt in years. The Sith's rule of two, a doctrine he had manipulated to his advantage, now seemed a fragile thing, barely containing the brewing storm of ambition and revenge. So much for the rule of two. Sidious considered the possibility of uniting the old Sith under his banner, at least temporarily, until the war against the Jedi and their allies had been decisively won. But then what? The thought of an ensuing Sith civil war, a struggle for supremacy filled with betrayal and bloodshed, was inevitable. Could he, even with all his power and cunning, emerge victorious in such a conflict? Lost in contemplation, a more pressing menace pierced his concentration. A disturbance in the Force drew his attention. A transformation had taken hold of his puppet, Biden, altering him into an unrecognizable entity one curiously familiar to the old man who had appeared in the new studio with Trump and Tucker. Sidious could sense the malevolent aura now emanating from Biden from across the galaxy. But would he now be friend or foe? 
Amidst the swirling mists of uncertainty, a shadowy figure emerged. Welcome, Lord Nihilus. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. If you enjoyed the journey and are eager for more wild fan fiction, don't forget to hit that like button, share with your fellow fans and subscribe for more episodes. And if you're as enchanted by the idea of Middle Earth meeting Hogwarts as we are, make sure to check out our series exploring this magical crossover. Your support brings these worlds to life. Until next time, keep the fantasy alive.